Hey there, Postal here, and today, well, today's going to be kind of a sad day in the uh, life of Postal Monkey as far as World of Warplanes is concerned. Uh, not because of anything dramatic, but only because today we're going to see the final battle I'm going to have in the F-84B. At least the final battle for a while, uh, as I do earn the F-84F Tier 10 American Multi-Role Fighter today. And let's hop into it. Alright, so what is so awesome about the Thunder Jet here? Well, well, what isn't? Um, it is a multi-role in the true sense of the word. I've mentioned it before in, uh, in previous videos that I've done on the F-84B. Uh, this plane does everything you want it to do. Um, it is the definition of a multi-role, and it makes the grind to get here all the, the worth it. I don't even remember... <laughs> you know those P47 and uh, XP72 games they weren't the worst but there wasn't a lot of flexibility with those planes there you can do everything you want to do in this plane so uh, the video that we're going to be seeing today of my gameplay isn't it's not next level uh, gameplay by any means it's the last battle I have before I can purchase the F84F uh, and I will be flying it, if you're watching this video on the day that it posts, I'll be flying the Tier 10 uh, tonight on stream uh, between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. Uh, but let's get into the video uh, of the gameplay first, and then I'll meet you back here at the hangar. Okay, well, this battle started off, um, well, right there. Didn't give me 30 seconds of loading time or nothing. Play this plane. Such a nice looking plane. Pretty sure the uh, red and white checkers are not very camouflagey, but hey, we might argue. So one of the things I like about this plane is it's a friggin' multi-roll. It's basically a ridiculously maneuverable um, ground pounder. Especially this particular line is really good at um, flipping sectors when you need to get ground targets. So I'm coming over here. Um, I figure it's right in the beginning of the battle. I can knock out quite a bit of the aerial targets before I need to necessarily worry about um, you know, shooting the ground targets. One thing I like about the Tiny Tims is you can just kind of drop them and go, right? Uh, like any rockets in the game, as long as your aiming is relatively good. I stayed there a little long just to make sure they actually hit properly. Sometimes I don't trust that they're going to do that. Uh, but anyway, I'm a little better with my aiming with uh, ground rockets than I am with bombs. So we see that there's a BVP over here. Uh, we definitely need to be mindful of him. I figure the mining facility is already flipped, so there's no point in us uh, going over there for a little while at least. Let's get rid of this guy because he's you know, the most dangerous thing around us right now. Um, Obviously, you need to watch out for any of the humans. Uh, they tend to go for other humans. Uh, human genocide, I guess, is the way of the future. So, quick up and over, we're able to get away from the 37 mils that this XP 58 is going to have and um, move from there. Unfortunately, I had my engine knocked out. I'm not even sure how it got knocked out, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so we come up here, we can get this ground pounder, or at least weaken him enough. And continue on our way. So, you see, I don't mind getting stuck in. Uh, you know, I see these defense aircraft coming around here. I want to get rid of that guy so I don't have to worry about him going to the comm center. And I know that I can turn around and get these BF-109 cheese. We'll go ahead and... Might as well flip the center since we're here. Uh, we've got our bombers coming into the mining facility, and so I know that that's going to be um, yeah, attacked, I guess is the right word for it. They haven't gotten the comm center yet, so we're not in a huge rush, but we don't want to get hit by either of those guys. Um, had to kind of thread a needle there. We wanted to make sure that we um, were out of the way of each of them. 
so now we've got this guy we're going to have to deal with. I figure I'm just going to use my uh, momentum and my speed to continue this way. He's not coming my way, so I'm able to flip over and around, and we'll come back here and see what we can do versus him. Um, he's not paying a oh, whole heck of a lot of attention, apparently. Um, there's no way that I should be able to uh, be fighting him how I am. Um, and I wasn't sure if he was just going to keep being a goofball or what exactly was going on. Alright, so now we're boosting away, get away, get away, get away. It is a yak, um, and at this level it can keep up with me, but he's on such low hit points um, and I know I could turn back around, gave myself the time. And another really good plane in the X, uh, <laughs> the Spitfire 14. This XP is just being a pain in the butt. Hopefully he's not paying attention to me. Um, but it's a very, very dangerous aircraft. And clearly his rear gunner is doing okay here. It's turning too tight though, because now his rear gunner can't stick with me. Um, granted, I've got really good airspeed, but his best bet isn't to turn, because he's definitely going to lose in that kind of situation. Alright, so we're just kind of hanging on to the center at this point. We've got a mining facility. Um, they've got a mining facility. But we, there's no reason to stay in the center. We can be a pain in the butt against their comm center. So we're kind of hanging out between the two sectors at this point and trying to decide what's going to be the best route or route. Um, decide that the 211 is the best target. We'll get him knocked out. And he'll kind of drag us um, on purpose to defending the mining facility. Obviously they've got um, two ground pounders coming in here, and it's still a close battle. Yeah, we're up four sectors to one, uh, but keeping this mining facility will allow us to really rack up points pretty quickly. So the key to going against things like an IL-40 is to not just sit behind it attacking. So you'll notice I do some crisscrossing maneuvers, and uh, shout out to Vibat. Um, he was pretty um, excited about being able to do things like that and so I thought that was a prime opportunity to toss those tiny Tims down and uh, you know do some ground damage to that ground pounder. Uh, so we've gotten rid of the IL-40, we have now gotten rid of the ME-329 and so crisis averted at the mining facility. Uh, really, this game's going to be over pretty quickly at this point. <laughs> but we want to go over here and see what we can do against the um, comm center. It really is the only thing that's even potentially an issue. And we figure just get rid of all of our rockets. Ah! Oh my god, that was way too close. Um, so let's get back in dogfight mode, right? Get our guns on target, get down on him, knock it out, flip back over here. Now both of our mining facilities have gotten their bonus and the game's basically over. So we just went from being relatively close, um, about halfway points, to uh, what a minute, a minute and a half later, game over. And yeah. So this wasn't the best game that I've had in this plane, but it shows you the full capabilities of this particular plane um, and to a lesser extent to the line before it but definitely this plane can't wait for tier 10 let's head back to the hangar all right so here's our end plates here um, you know just a solid all-around game uh, nothing too spectacular although did get that cheeky rocketeer um, you know led both teams in regards to points um, definitely had some good support from our F-94D, not that I saw them, but obviously um, they were having a good impact. Um, yeah, I just really enjoy this particular plane. Alright, and so that was our gameplay uh, in the F-84B, our last battle before uh, I put it up for the time being. This is definitely a keeper in my opinion. The plane's not going anywhere, it'll be staying in my hangar, but um, if you've watched this channel before or seen me on stream, you know that I tend to, as of right now, I'm just grinding out everything I can grind. I'm saving planes to come back and play at a later time, uh, you know, to play on request, 
or post videos as I see fit. This is definitely going to be one of those planes uh, that I keep. I totally enjoy it. If I, It's my go-to multi-role right now, and that's because, as you saw in the video, if I need a dogfight, this plane will dogfight for me, and dogfight very well. If I need to flip a sector, this plane has the ground armament to be able to flip that sector and not have to worry. Uh, you can do it on your own, basically. So it's a true multi-role. Right, so when it comes to multi-roles, uh, I don't recommend going down on any multi-role line first. You, even second. Probably not even third, but at the very earliest, you'd want it as your third line. And the reason being is because you really want to learn capabilities of the light fighter lines, um, whether it's a line that you're going down or a line that you continually run into. And then you need to learn the capabilities of heavy fighters. In certain situations, you're going to be playing this plane or any multi role, like a light fighter. You can out dogfight, you know, other multi roles that you might be able to outmaneuver or outmaneuver heavy fighters. Um, when you come up against light fighters that you can't outmaneuver, well, you're going to act like a heavy fighter. You're going to use your speed, you're going to get away. Or you're going to continue your momentum in those kind of situations. And because of that, because of those nuances, because you always have to be um, thinking one step ahead when you're in a multi-role plane. I really don't recommend any multi-role plane when you're first starting off the game. You want to play this line, uh, this line definitely, but other multi-role lines in general after you've learned the nuances of the game. And unlike a lot of other multi-role lines in the game, this particular one ends up with you know, an actual multi-role. So if we look at uh, the Russian line, yeah, this could be considered a multi-role. It's got some bombs, but they're they're not really <laughs> two 250k uh, bombs. So they'll do some damage, but really this is about the 57 mils on this particular plane, and that's about it. Uh, if you go to the German line, the multi-role line here ends with the BVP 215, which yeah has a few rockets, but this whole line after the um, FW-190s, those are basically fighters. This is multi-role, but in a loose sense of the term. Um, with Japanese, very similar to um, as far as its output is concerned, very similar to the Russian line. Totally different airframe and maneuverability, but your bombs are kind of useless. Um, I'm not even sure I keep those on there normally. It's really a, a light fighter as far as that particular plane is concerned. The UK is really the only other line that has a true multi-role in it, uh, a multi-role line, and it doesn't really get good at get good at um, overtaking ground armament until you get to tier nine and tier ten. Tier eight's okay, but here you've got a bunch of rockets and a couple bombs. And so this particular plane has all the rockets. It's got two tiny tims which are take place of the bombs but they're basically bombs for all intensive purposes um, but unlike the hunter this plane can actually um, outmaneuver uh, quite a few planes out there and in a pinch can be a dogfighter so that's why I really enjoy this particular plane uh, and I, I absolutely love it I can't wait to get the tier 10 um, and I can't wait to come back and play this at a later time which I definitely will be so anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, my video. Hope you enjoyed my explanation of the particular of the F84B. I'm gonna stop saying particular, and uh, I hope to see you tonight. Otherwise, definitely enjoy uh, your day or night in World of Warplanes, and I will catch you next time. Bye.